Okay, going to get in another gun show report. This one is uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Another c &E gun show. The one I did a few weeks ago when I went to uh, Fayetteville wasn't too favorable. And this one wasn't much better. And what I was trying to see is the reaction with all the stuff in the headlines, crisis, panics, <clears throat> and a general consensus of what's going on. So I was able to take the camera with me and when I got up to the parking lot because uh, I could tell you, I just had the time to do it. Um, and I'll show you the clip now where I drove into the parking lot and that's about it because you can't film the outside, inside of the building or anything with a gun show. Cameras are not allowed. But just to give you an idea of in the height of the crisis. I'll show you the parking lot and that thing was slap full so we'll watch that clip now. Alright, what we're going to do here a little bit different from my gun show reports is we're coming into the Winston-Salem gun show here and uh, back there in the Sandy Hook thing, the same venue, same show, when I came to this parking lot we're rendering it right now, and I'll stop up here. If you look out across this field and everything, this whole area was full. There was nowhere to park. All of this off to the side and down through here. Now we're coming up. You got about two rows of vehicles, not that much. So actually for a show, the venue has gotten smaller, but Obviously, there's not a panic, there's not a rush, there's hardly anybody here. Something tells me this may be another waste of time. But at one time, this whole area was so full, I drove around twice and did not find a place to park. Now, if we look over this way towards the ticket area, there always was a thing where there'd be a line in front of the things, and we'll go by. As you see, no line whatsoever. It used to be a 15, 20 minute wait to get in. So, obviously, the panic ain't here. I'm going to get me a little spot off to the side here and go into the show. Cameras are not allowed in the show. So, this is about the extent of all I can show you of the gun show for today. Okay, after we got there... <coughs> I realized every now and again about Winston is every other month and then there's certain uh, venues they move the building. In other words, that building where I drove by the front there was no tickets being sold, that's the larger venue. That's an activities building. Well, I didn't know because that is, I think that's a state fairgrounds or a fairgrounds of some sort. They were in the other building, which was a, uh, there's a skating rink in there. And of course I got there, there's two ticket people uh, at the windows, and there were two old fellas ahead of me. That was it. I mean, no, no waiting in line, no nothing, no huge crowds. And the building is smaller, okay, so even when you go in there, it looks full because it's just smaller by the size of the building and there's less tables available and they were all full. There were people in the lobby that set up like about five, six tables, you know, had a lot of uh, mostly accessories, not so much guns. And there were a lot of people like me that are not, you know, dealers, more hobbyist dealers. So there was a lot more unusual things and unusual guns. Still a lot of people retailing holsters, knives, coins, and, that. and there's more there. So in actuality, it did feel crowded, okay? And there was, for this show, a good turnout, because I've been to it where it wasn't crowded, but there was a good turnout, and I was correct. There was a whole bunch of people wandering around with guns, be it AR-15s, one guy had an FNFAL. Um, <clears throat> actually, I think I've seen two and 
M1 carbines, all this, all this other stuff. There, there was a lot of guys toting guns, a lot of side dealing, trading, a lot of people loitering in the lobby to come just, you know, stand there and hold their gun. So a lot of that going on. Uh, your usual dealers that have all your polymer new stuff, like your Tauruses, uh, Smiths, Glocks, all them guys are there. There was a couple large dealers there. They just about go to every show. They have nice shops, you know, a regular established dealer. And your whole array, everybody cutting prices and, and that. And then uh, there were a couple collectors. One guy I do know uh, that goes to every show. And he deals mostly in mill surplus. And I asked him, I said, well, is the panic on? Are they? And he goes, no. And, of course, he brought out his 50-round drum magazines or 100-round drum magazines. He had a bunch of them out there. He goes, nope, uh, no big rush. Nobody, he goes, actually, the past few months, nobody's been really spending any money, at least on the old collectible style guns, a lot of the stuff that my uh, subscribers like. Nobody's dropping no money on it. Um, so he said, no, but there is a lot of people trying to sell. And there was people trying to sell Mohs and Nagants, and like I said, uh, different uh, magazine rifles and that stuff that is considered to be banned if they pass a ban. But another thing, ammunition. Ammunition, they're, they're getting flooded. 22 ammunition, the different off-brands, Aguila or whatever. There was tons of it around and it's not that expensive. I don't know what, you know, you go to the sporting goods stores last I checked, they get about anywhere from 28 to 30 dollars for a 500 round carton and they had a Memorial Day sale where they're selling Thunderbolts for 12 dollars a carton of 500 or 550 and so there's 22 ammo made by several non-US manufacturers all over the place and I don't think it's very much I don't think you're paying not even 20 dollars for a carton like 18, 6, 17, 18 dollars for a carton of 500. So you're starting to see a backlash in the ammunition. The AR-15 stuff is just all over in piles and like my dealer friend said a lot of people bought inventory back years ago stockpiling it waiting for a ban to come in effect and then sell it but he goes there's so much of it out there that it's difficult to sell and the price isn't going up and the market is saturated and flooded okay so that's the thing as for a full-out panic no okay and it's kind of strange how there was no panic now but when this happened back like I said I mentioned Sandy Hook I mean, you couldn't you couldn't get into the parking lot. It, it was a three ring circus, and any AR-15 accessory part piece or complete gun went four times the value, four times more than what it was the month before. So it kind of goes to show you, like I made that other video about mass panic and that. It's very strange, and, and people people get a thought in their head for one reason or the other. How? Or whatever and I believe what it was is most people believe the Democrats while they're in power would uh, enact the law and then another thing is just to say to have it is one thing but the vast majority of it people did it out of greed too that's another thing and and there's two factors okay one is actually people worried about their gun rights and the other one is just greed, plain basic greed. And now there's a backlash to all of this. So, in two weeks, I will be at the Greensboro Gun Show. Um, that's the local one. It's the only one that I set up and go to. And I'm hoping to move a bunch of stuff and, and you know, have some sort of turnover of money. Uh, but, from the looks of it, unless I get a certain crowd of subscribers there are a lot of people that, that know me from YouTube that do show up and mention it 
and there are people that do look for the mill surplus calibers because that's one thing I know it's with all the ammunition nobody really had the calibers that I reload enough okay and um, I'm going to try to move a few pieces out of my collection and so that's that's what I'm hoping to do and that's another thing the the prices on some of the mill surplus stuff are uh, kind of unreasonable any Swedish Mauser people want five hundred dollars and I've seen some of them with rusty bores in that they look good on the outside but the bores are rusty yet. you know I, it's basically a three three fifty gun I mean if it's really pristine and meant something a little unusual maybe four but five hundred for one that's beat up you know so I don't know have to wait and see and hopefully it'll turn out but there is no panic there is no insanity that all of that's a thing of the past uh, so that's my take on it even though you know it was worth going there there was a couple things I looked at one thing I almost bought you know so it wasn't a wasted trip but again there was only one person selling reloading things and he had a very very limited selection of powder and stuff so I don't know if the codes and a lot of the local venues are cracking down on the powder and that because of this terrorist stuff or whatever or having regulations or they just don't want you selling the stuff like that so I, you know, I don't know but it's coming to look at least locally a lot of the reloading vendors are not there and uh, he, I did ask about one individual I did ask about one individual that used to go to the Charlotte show and had a very, very large display. He had tables and tables, just about anything and everything he wanted. I guess the fella, his health is gone, and so that vendor will no longer be around because of uh, health issues and his age and, and, and that. So he's another vendor out of the game. And a lot of, I see a lot of that happening. A lot of people... Uh, or either older, you know, age, health, uh, they just passed away, or they get so, their health gets to where they can't walk. There's two or three guys that are in little scooter chairs there that are vendors, and uh, also they're cracking down on the regulations about displaying gunpowder and, and other things too. It's kind of a local thing, but that's my take on it. I hope you it informed you.